Hi, I'm Luann Mims, the Special Collections Librarian for the Lakeland History Room at the Lakeland Public Library. Today, we want to focus on women's history and I want to share with you some information about Ruth Elder, a female aviator. I want you to meet Lakeland's celebrity aviatrix, Ruth Elder. She came to Lakeland via her husband, Lyle Womack, who worked in Panama and flew into Lakeland frequently on business. He often landed at Haldeman's airport. While in Lakeland, Ruth caught the flying bug and she used the money that she earned from a variety of beauty contests to learn how to fly. She vowed that she would be a pilot and wanted to do solo flights across the country. This was pretty unprecedented in the 1920s. Just as a point of reference, this is really pushing barriers because the famous female flyer we all know, Amelia Earhart, really didn't do her transatlantic flight until 1928. But this is 1927 and Ruth Elder wants that record. Ruth did indeed become a famous aviator. She was a charter member of the 99s Club, which was the International Organization of Women Pilots, which was formed in 1929 by 99 female aviators. Amelia Earhart was also a charter member. Mr. George Halderman, a longtime Lakeland resident and aviator, owned a garage that serviced airplanes, but he also made money on the side by giving people lessons. One of his students was Ruth Elder. In October 1927, co-pilots Ruth Elder and George Halderman boarded their plane named the American Girl and took off from New York on their way to Paris. However, their attempt failed when an oil line burst and they were forced to ditch their plane 336 miles west of the Azores in the middle of the Atlantic. They were picked up by a Dutch tanker. Even though their attempt was a failure, their flight was the longest ever made by a woman at the time and established a new overwater endurance flight record of 2,623 miles, taking place over 36 hours. Her historic flight earned Ruth a celebrity status. Elder became known as the Miss America of aviation because she was the first woman to co-pilot an attempt like this. Upon her return to New York City, a ticker tape parade with much fanfare was held for Elder and Haldeman. Lakeland honored the duo by renaming their aviation field the Haldeman Elder Airport. Ruth went on to have a career on the silver screen. She starred in two Hollywood silent movies and a national vaudeville tour. She earned over $250,000, an equivalent of multi-millions by today's standards, and she epitomized the flapper personality with her bobbed hair and wearing of men's clothes. Women's History Month celebrates the accomplishments of women around the world, and it's a good time to reflect on how things differ for women not so long ago. Looking in retrospective is somewhat surprising that though many favored her venture, an equal number did not think women should be doing this, particularly other women. Her husband had begrudgingly supported her, but made reference in a newspaper interview that having babies would put an end to this flying. Eleanor Roosevelt publicly admonished Elder, calling her very foolish to set about accomplishing such a task. And as if criticism from the First Lady of the United States wasn't enough, the founder of the League for Fostering Genius, Winifred Stackville Stoner, said of Ruth that a good typist is of much more service to humanity than a woman in aviation. To Ruth's credit, she didn't back down and she seemed determined to forge her own way with true pioneer spirit. From today's point of view, Ruth Elder was a woman to be acknowledged for her accomplishments and stands as a role model for today's females that want to soar into a greater future. So if you want to find out more about Lakeland's history, come see me down at the Lakeland History Room at the Lakeland Public Library or visit us at our website.